Converting a Nintendo DS Lite into a dedicated Game Boy Advance system, dubbed the Game Boy Macro Mod, is considered to be a difficult modification to pull off. There are many DIY instructions online on how to do this conversion, but typically they require extensive alterations to the existing DS shell, and your end results may vary. To date, there hasn't been a commercially available option for DIYers to do the Game Boy Macro Mod. That is until now. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Tito. Today I'm going to show you how you can go from a Nintendo DS Lite with a broken hinge into a Game Boy Macro system uh, utilizing Boxy Pixel's aluminum uh, Game Boy Macro faceplate. I hope you guys enjoyed that sequence. I'm debating whether or not for future videos if I should do more detailed instructions or to just stick with the montages like the one I just uh, showed you in, in this video. 
uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So the way I did this installation, I didn't go into it blind. I actually followed the instructions on the BoxyPixel website. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it's very simple to follow, lots of pictures and very detailed descriptions on what you need to do to accomplish this mod. Also on the BoxyPixel website are all the other items you need to do in order to complete this modification. First one being the 330 ohm resistor and also the speaker, which fits perfectly into the uh, aluminum faceplate. A note on, on my particular installation, you may have noticed I was using a glue gun uh, in order to cover the, uh, one of the holes that was drilled into the faceplate. That's actually, that hole is actually there for the LED indicator light in the top right-hand corner of the Nintendo DS. There is nothing covering that hole, so the reason why I used hot glue to cover it is twofold. First, it, it prevents any debris from getting inside uh, the Game Boy Macro console, and, and two, it actually serves as a light diffuser. The LED light just coming through the hole unobstructed is actually really, really distracting. It's very bright, so putting hot glue into the hole actually diffuses the light and really tones down the intensity of it with and also it kind of makes it look like a more refined and polished product in, in the end so uh, you'll notice i actually used kapton tape to cover the hole before putting the hot glue that was to prevent the hot glue from going through the hole and protruding to the other side and also it um, once the glue dries and you remove the kapton tape the hot glue is actually flush with the aluminum faceplate so it really looks polished and, and nice okay so what did i think of the actual modification once i completed the install i have to say this is the cleanest and easiest way to do the game boy macro mod if you want to complete this again go to the boxy pixel website you can pick up the faceplate for as of the recording of this video i believe it's 49 dollars for just the faceplate and if you want the complete kit, you can also, on the website, buy the 330 ohm resistor, as well as the speaker. The modification itself is, except for the faceplate, everything you do to the motherboard is exactly the same as you would do any other Game Boy Macro mod. It just requires a little soldering for the speaker and the resistor, um, and then disassembly of the Nintendo DS Lite unit itself. And that's it. If you're comfortable with doing those two things, this is a very simple mod to accomplish on your own. So what, what do I think are the pros and cons of this modification? For the pros, I think um, this is the best form factor for the Game Boy Advance. Um, it's also quite a bit thinner than the, than the original Game Boy Advance, and that's simply due to the fact that it doesn't utilize disposable AA batteries. Um, it has its own internal rechargeable lithium-ion battery, which makes the enclosure uh, quite a bit thinner than the Game Boy Advance. The other thing, like I mentioned, is, is that it has a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, which is fantastic. So you don't have to always be swapping in and out new batteries like you would on the original Game Boy Advance. And lastly, it's, it's the looks. It, it's a really nice looking unit. I think compared to the entire Game Boy Advance lineup, whether it's the original Game Boy Advance or the Game Boy Micro, the Macro I think is the best looking version of the Game Boy Advance console. So what are the cons? Really the cons have to do with the nature of the Nintendo DS Lite as a Game Boy Advance player. The first con is letterboxing around the image, and that can't be avoided simply because of the native resolution of the DS Lite screen. The second con, again, is based on the design of the Nintendo DS Lite. Uh, the Nintendo DS Lite doesn't allow the Game Boy Advance cartridges to sit flush with the, with the console. So it kind of sticks out from the bottom, and it doesn't look nice. So even though this is a con, there's actually a really simple solution for this. There's a product called the Easy Flash Omega. The Easy Flash Omega is essentially a flash cart, but it's small enough that it can fit into a smaller shell that sits flush with the Game Boy Macro console or the Nintendo DS Lite. What's nice is you can load the ROMs for the games you own onto that 
flash cart and carry it around with you without having to carry all the cartridges for all the games that you actually own. On top of that, it actually emulates Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and NES games. So you can put your, your library of Game Boy Color and NES games on there and carry that with you all in a nice sleek small package. So there you have it. This is the easiest and best way to do the Game Boy Macro Mod in my opinion, and it's made possible by BoxyPixel. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you hit that like button, and if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Alright, thanks everyone. I hope to see you all next time.